Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to ROG Pulse. Today, we're talking about our new keyboard switches, as well as a couple new keyboards that are coming out that the switches will be included on. Of course, my name is Jake Kalinske, and I'm here with Jeff Campman once again. Jeff, what's new? Yeah, it's been a super busy week. The, uh, the Always. Yeah, the lid, the lid is off of the performance for all of our new... Uh, laptops with the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and GeForce RTX 30 series mobile GPUs, which is really neat. So if everybody's um, eager to see in all the, the data, what is uh, yeah. the best place to go and find that? So I would, I, the ROG Flow X13 is, um, I think the unit that's been reviewed the most right now. And uh, Dave Lee, Day two, Dave 2D on YouTube did an excellent uh, review of that one. So if you want to check the whole deal out with the flow, that's where I would start. I can't wait to get my hands on the flow. I mean, it's just such an interesting yeah. device because the external eGPU that you can just plug into the side and basically turn this 13-inch mm -hmm. device into a tablet plus desktop all-in-one. I really... I'm going yeah, to do some, some fun experimental <laughs> streaming with it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you want a super light convertible notebook with like stylus and touch support like you just unplug it and slip it in your bag and you got this thin and light thing it's really cool but there's still like an eight core 16 thread ryzen 9 cpu in there it's really a marvel it is really yeah it's something liquid new. metal thermal compound yeah liquid metal thermal compound on the cpu it's just it's packed with cool stuff i think that's the nice thing about all this this generation of laptops they pretty much all have amd cpus and they pretty much and all the amd cpus now have liquid metal for cooling so we're getting uh -huh. better and better performance and something about the flow that i'm really pumped about is when i would use it it would be intent mode and intent mode you're getting that much better cooling in the device because of the way it's yeah. positioned so um, yeah, it's standing it's, up a little bit like the older mothership. Yeah, yeah. And draw an area in through that triangle. So yeah, that would work really well. What else is topical this week? Um, obviously, the whole internet's freaking out about stocks and all that fun <laughs> stuff. That's fine. Uh, that's just the, the fun chaos that is the world of 2020 and 2021. But the Resident Evil trailer, I'm a big Resident Evil fan, and Village looks phenomenal. I'm really, really pumped to... I think they said the the launch date is May, which is a bit later huh. than I would have expected. And it seems like a weird, weird, you know, time slot, but yeah, I got to admit, I wouldn't be able to deal. <laughs> I'm not a horror guy, but I know, um, we've got some other teammates who are really so, uh, eager to well, get I, their hands on that. I got to ask, have you ever played a resident evil game? I have not. Do yourself a favor. And, and if you do don't well like horror, horror. Resident Evil 2 remake okay. is is a masterpiece. And I don't think it's actually okay. that scary. Like, I don't think yeah. it's like a truly like terrifying game, but Resident Evil 7, the most recent one, that's first person by mm -hmm. making that first person. Oh, there's some some parts yeah. in that game that are just, yeah, the, the horror is there. I'll Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. <laughs> well, getting um, getting to the topic, I guess we can uh, we can just jump right in. So. Guys, sure. we're, we're here to talk about our, our brand new uh, keyboards. We have two of them that are coming out and they're featuring our first ever in-house switches. Now the keyboards are the, the Strix Scope RX and then the, the ROG Claymore 2. Um, yeah. And the switches right now, well, they're the optical mechan the ROG RX optical mechanical switches, red and, mm -hmm. and blue, right? Did I get the terminology right? Yes. Yes. The ROG RX optical mechanical key switch. It, it's a mouthful. Yeah. It's worth it though, right? <laughs> oh man. Um you, you proclaim you proclaim it and I... then it's <laughs> it's worthy of the name. I uh got one in this weekend to get my hands on and really get to, to take a stab at it. And I, I must preface this with saying that I've been using blue and brown switches for 12 years give or take uh -huh. and this is my first time mm -hmm. using red and i'm just at like this midlife crisis now because these switches are so buttery they're so smooth um and it's not just that it's a different type of switch i mean we we're talking like just uh -huh. just a brief overview it's got a the actuation point is a bit higher so the click is very fast uh -huh. you can really just get this immediate click and you also have 
um, that optical lens for for super fast precision and also the wobble free. Mm -hmm. So that's like that's our little overview teaser. Yeah. But let's let's dive yeah. on in and and cover this this new switch. For sure. So um, yeah, I think the most relevant place to start then is the optical aspect of it because the um, usually mechanical keyboard switches use a pair of metal contacts like any other electrical device to register an input you're closing a switch mm -hmm. and um, that uh, metal to metal interface uh, you have to have a, a circuit in your chain or you know an element of your circuit that looks for or what's called a debounce and um, it waits for that stable or signal to stabilize before it actually registers an input. And that can take a little bit of time. Um, and when you're talking about mere milliseconds in a modern game for a frame to be generated, like, you know, even the 60 uh, frames per second game is generating a new frame every 16.7 milliseconds. So like even a cup, it may not sound like a big deal, but even a couple milliseconds more input lag could be the difference um, between you know, getting out where you need to be and just completely getting shot in the head. Well, if we're, we're so, talking about the technology in general, we if we're looking uh -huh. at improving what exists on the market right now, this mm -hmm. is the way that we take it to the next level. Right. So, the yeah, the RX optical mechanical switches use a beam of infrared light, as you said. And yeah. when that's um, registered, the uh, registration is practically instantaneous. Literally the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, there's not this debounce delay. Uh, it's just it's a it's a per, um, it 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 is like the platonic ideal of a switch that on off. Um, you know, the the function. website has this whole like hear it in action, but I, I'm just gonna instead mm -hmm. take my mic and lower it down to the keyboard. <laughs> you hear this horrible craning sound. Hold on. Oh, ah, there we go. It's a little bit noise gated. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think um, I think the stream can probably hear better, better than, than you can on the call. call. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the um, so, yeah, that the that light driven um, actuation method uh, is truly at the heart of the entire deal. And then, um, like you said, we have two types coming up. In this form factor, the um, the reds are completely linear. They mm -hmm. don't have any sort of tactile bump or click in the path. So the only sound you're hearing is like the key bottoming out. And I personally like these a lot. Um, I, I've been a red user basically ever since I laid hands on a mechanical keyboard. Um, and it's that it's like you said that anti wobble aspect I think is really interesting. Because you don't think of that as a problem with your keyboard. It, you just think of it as a normality. That's just the way right. it is, right? Yeah. You know, and it, and a lot of, yeah, I was going to say a lot of the traditional traditional mechanical key switch designs use that central cross shaped stem as part of the plunger, right? The thing that goes up and down um, when you press the key, and because there's nothing on the corners. You're like, to kind of stop that motion. Yeah, it still moves a little I bit. I can wiggle, wiggle it side to side, to side but, but it doesn't does right. tilt the way another key would. Keyboard. It just, just right. has, it has a little, little give side, side to side. To side. That's, that's about, about it. it. Mm -hmm. So that central post, there's nothing on the corners to support the, um, the key when your fingers hit it. And so the force you would tip, you would normally use to like, depress the key could be going into moving it side to side or moving it you know laterally um with these it's really incredible like when you press it it just goes down and that sounds like a stupid thing to say but all the force just goes into moving the key down and like the action of the keys moving themselves is smoother than pretty much anything I've ever touched. It feels like a fine musical instrument or something. Ooh, yeah, no, it's yeah. it's got a really nice it's buttery sneaky. feel. And like I said, I've mm -hmm. been using browns and blues, which are both the clicky style for a long time. And I was like really kind of hesitant and wary, but 
I love this thing. It, it's a beauty. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm excited to get my hands on a, the blue switches in the future as we will have mm -hmm. a blue variant of these optical mechanical switches. Um, right. are, are they available yet or are they coming? No, those are okay. coming up. Okay. Yeah, right now, I think, I think the Scope RX is in the market. And uh, it's only available with the reds right now. It's kind of showing off. You can see the RGB mm -hmm. dancing down the line. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you look at the plungers of these switches, in fact, if you just look at these switches in general, they don't really look like anything else out there. Because instead of that central plunger, there's a square, there's a square shaped um, molding. It's a hollow key stem, basically. The, the all and so all of the key cap is supported by this square shaped hollow um, piece, and the keys actually slide into that plunger on the corners. So it's supported all around, and then there's also a stabilizing device in the uh, spring mechanism that controls the the upward and downward motion to further kill that kind of extraneous um, movement. And it's, it's, the other the other other nice uh, aspect of this is that because there's nothing in the way of that LED in the center for the RGB LED lighting, um, you know the light can shine straight up into the um, molding on the keycap. So you and it can also shine out the sides like that. We use this to great advantage on this board because there are some legends on the sides of the switches. And they're really clearly illuminated. So like if you're going for um, I'm trying to, yeah, if, if you're going for a profile, if you're going for one of the lock buttons, they're all, you can find those uh, at a glance. I got the mood lighting on the stream now. <laughs> we can really see the yeah. the effect. And um, just kind of speaking about the, the keys, they are per key RGB lighting. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can change this to be whichever kind of profile you like. We've been talking about red versus blue switches. Well, here's a red versus mm -hmm. blue profile in, in Aura. Um, <laughs> you know, you're feeling like, yeah. uh, uh, what, what would you call this? This is, I would call this Faye. If you had to give it a name, mm -hmm. this is very yeah. like fantastical. This one's very uh, Asus, red and black. <laughs> yeah, I use solid color orange personally. Okay. For night vision. Ooh. This is the... Doesn't stress my eyes. <laughs> this is the exact green of Deku from My Hero Academia. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of neat little things. You can sync this up to your music. You can sync it up to be adaptive with uh, certain games have or, or integration like Ghost Runner. We've actually done a stream with that um, in particular. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of fun to, you know, play with it. But I, I, one thing I will say is I'm coming off using one of our older keyboards and this is brand new. The, the RGB feels a lot more precise just because it has that per key lighting. And mm -hmm. even, even this, uh, the logo, like the eye up here on the top corner, there's even like two sections. You'll actually see the light uh, transition across that. It's not just one block. So mm -hmm. it's that level mm -hmm. of detail that, that really stands out to me. Yeah. And so for the uh, stat nerds out there, the, the red switches have an initial force of um, 40 grams. I forget what the actual, there's a, it's GF, but I forget what the F stands for. Mm. Um, force? So yeah, that in the, um, yeah, so they have a light initial um, actuation force, but it's heavy enough that just resting your fingers on the board will not trigger these switches, like some really lightweight, gamer focused switches uh are easy to trigger accidentally if you've ever had experience with them so like you'll just be like tapping fidgeting on the keyboard and you'll suddenly start entering text and that's kind of annoying but uh these you can just rest your fingers and they have quite enough pushback to resist that um um just, just like yeah the actuation point itself if you're not a person who bottoms out your keys like it's at 1.5 millimeters down from the top of the stroke so it's fast. Oh. Yeah, that is fast. We can uh, take a look at that again really quick. And, you know, I see some questions in chat asking if we have new mics. We do. Well, we have a, 
-hmm. we can talk about those uh, a little bit in a bit but there definitely are the gladius 3 is the one yeah. that i'm most excited for um mm -hmm. but yeah that's that, yeah the, the gladius 3 and the gladius 3 wireless are the two that came out at ces the price range for the new keyboard i, I it's on amazon for 129.99 so 130 bucks which is a really good price for a keyboard like this yeah 129 bucks New Egg and Amazon in the United States. Mm -hmm. And they are available now in stock. Mm -hmm. I just checked. I debated showing it on stream, but that feels tacky. We're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you actually go to, if you just Google ROG Strix Scope RX, you'll, you'll be brought to the landing page and you can find the where to buy links directly mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah. Cool. And they're not out yet, but the blues have a 65 gram um, initial actuation force. So they're a little more deliberate feeling. Uh, I know like people who type a lot or just gamers who like more under their fingers will enjoy that. Plus they'll have that tactile click. That's me because so, like I'm yeah. used to being able to kind of lean on my keyboard and, you know, just having that actuation uh -huh. point have a little bit more resistance on it. Um, to me, it's just a little bit better for me as just because just what I'm used to. It doesn't mean it's better. It's all preference, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. And now that we have um, two-way AI noise canceling on all our laptops and desktop motherboards, now he can you can use those clicky switches and not it's actually annoy the heck point. out of everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first started streaming back in like 2012, I played a lot of StarCraft II with blue switches, and I just had a like a desk mic that heard everything it ruined every mm -hmm. type of podcast i tried to do like it just it was actually uh quite the problem so yeah with ai noise cancellation mm -hmm. that, that's really nice um going yeah. down through the the website we is there anything more about switches you want to jump into um we i mean we'll talk more about the build story at like as we go through it because i know there's definitely a mm -hmm. story there mm -hmm. uh no i think i've covered it for the moment okay yeah, I just wanted to like kind of look at the website because this is actually a really nice little microsite we have for. I um, mean, these are waterproof. They are they're dust proof. This doesn't mean one hundred percent, of course, but these are nice things. Yeah. I'm sure they'll if... survive a spill. Yeah, yeah, because they're like the light is in there. You know, there's not like a mechanical element in there to corrode, or a metal element in there to corrode if you get it wet. That's a big deal. Um, feels like you know I I've destroyed exactly two keyboards with spilling drinks on them and it's uh it's not it's not the most fun thing to do in the world so then it's nice to have that no. resistance here um the usb 2.0 pass through you could charge your phone uh through that usb mm -hmm. port you could um basically get full access for whatever you need to be doing with that so that's that's really great a lot of uh devices don't necessarily have the full access with that usb port but it's becoming more standard i suppose <laughs> the ultra wide control key especially for fps players this is just a really nice quality of life thing. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't think it would make a big difference, but if you use that to crouch or whatever in your game of choice, like it, it it's like twice the size of the usual. So it, it, it gives you a much larger landing area to target. Yeah, it is definitely nice. And then we've got these um, macro. So we have a, a uh, stealth key, which, you know, if you're, I'm not going to watch a YouTube, YouTube video at, at work or something. Yeah, right. You shouldn't post it right now. And you're just trying to hide what you're doing. F12. Everything's minimized. Mm -hmm. Muted. You're safe. You're safe. We got you covered, friends. We got you mm -hmm. covered. Oh, this is also. The, yeah. Yeah. The, the Go ahead. They're, yeah, they're dedicated media keys, which I can't live without on any keyboard now. Um, by default, they're enabled. So if you're if you use F5 to refresh page like Jake and I do, <laughs> you you do need to press function F5. But there's a way to configure that so that it just locks it to normal function keys if you don't uh, take advantage of your media keys. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, one of the one of the things I really like about this, I know we were talking about Armory Crate earlier, um, but if you don't it, like to install software for whatever reason, you can control quite a few functions of this board right from the unit itself. So like if you want to adjust the color of your backlighting, switch profiles, uh, if you hold down the function key, like the delete end and page down keys will light up red, green, and blue so that you can mix those colors just right on the unit without any additional software, which is neat. And um, 
if you if you screw things up to the point that you're like, oh my gosh, it needs to start over entirely, that you can press function escape and just reset the whole thing. All without software. It so is nice. That's yeah. really convenient. There's a lot of yeah. stuff, yeah, built in like that. And you know, you were just talking about the media keys. One thing that mm -hmm. I I actually hate about keyboards is a lot of keyboards have the dedicated media buttons. Some the keyboards mm -hmm. larger because they're they're adding in this extra row on the top with buttons or yeah. Or like a scroll wheel. I don't like that. It's always annoyed me. Um, you know, I've always mm -hmm. liked this, you know, nice little compact shape. To me, this is the perfect keyboard shape. And like, I'm not even being mm -hmm. biased. Like, this is what I want. You would probably prefer yeah. to have no numpad. Every user has yeah. their own their own preference. But for me, this is like the dream. Mm -hmm. Like when 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 ROG sends me a new keyboard, they're like, all right, you got to swap to a different keyboard. I'm gonna be sad because I really like this keyboard way too much. Um, I just want the blue switches for me. These are the red switches again, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beauteous. No, it's, it's really, um, if you get the chance, I think, you know, you should absolutely get your hands on these switches. I think you'll be a convert basically right away. They're silent. Yeah, but it is. They're yeah, op it is optical mechanical a... in-house. There are first ever in-house switches we've ever made mm -hmm. for any keyboard. And yeah, they're about as buttery smooth and as silent as it gets. Mm -hmm. it, it really is quite unlike anything else I've ever laid hands on. And, you know, I, I wish we were exaggerating, but it's we're, we're being sincere, guys. This is like actually a crazy, yeah. crazy I good mean, switch. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used to, in my past life, I used to be a tech reviewer. <laughs> I've gotten through more keyboards than you can count. They landed on my doorstep like cordwood. And um, yeah, it, it, this really is something different. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid to pop a key off. Would it? Um, they, yeah, they're not too hard to get off. Oh, that was you can pull off the yeah. arrow key or something. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, right down here. Oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like much from that angle, but it actually came off easier than normal, I'd say. Um, yeah, there's an exploded view on the micro site if you just want to. Sure. But yeah, you can see how they're like, there's four corner posts on the keycap. If Jake. Yeah, yeah, that's put, a good yeah, point. Pull it up. You can bring that up. If this camera Ooh. will ever, ever yeah. focus. No, it hates me. <laughs> it's supposed to auto focus. Well, you can see, yeah, you can see the bokeh. Yeah, there you go. You can see how they're the, the four little pins in there that go into the corners of the switch. So and it's, then it's, it's supported all around. Yeah, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. That's why there's no wobble. So this design. Yep. Wow. Putting it on, you have to be a little bit more precise than normal. So I'm just going to leave it off like a heathen. Um, <laughs> we can take a look at the microsite again. You said there's an exploded view. Yeah. Talked about the Aura Sync okay. stuff. Armory crate. Must have been up further. Oh, it's yeah. That the product page doesn't have it. Oh, okay. There's actually a. There's a different document let, somewhere. Let, let, yeah, let me. Send that over to you. Secrets. There we go. Yeah, secrets. And yeah, scroll down just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just you can see this in a nicer, oh, yeah. nice yeah, closer yeah. image right up here at the top. WSD mm -hmm. removed. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So you can see how there's the square shaped plunger at the top, and then there's the big uh, stabilizer slash spring unit in the middle. And the LED just goes straight up through that. Light speed actuation. And yeah, here's a comparison of the signal being sent and how it's just, mm -hmm. just light. Little nice little animation, but it they mm -hmm. are really, um, yeah. This is the kind of thing where it's like, I, I, this is probably the first time since COVID's hit where I'm like, man, the world's missing out from not having traditional conventions where you can try these new things. Yeah. Like some of our new devices, like the Flow and like these new switches, are really nice. And the coolest part about these switches, we're kind of going all out. They're not just on our, these keyboards. We're going to see them built into some of the new key, the new laptops. Like the, uh, the actually, new... yeah. Let me stop you there because okay. it's not. It's the optical principle is 
the same, but the actual switch mechanism is not. Oh, okay. But yeah, so the the Scar series, the new Scar series, um, does have that optical mecha or optical um, but registration. But they're slightly different. But yeah. Yeah, just because laptops are so much thinner. That makes a lot of sense. You can't fit though. this entire switch in there. Yeah. I just assumed. Okay. Damn. Now, Wobble yeah, Free. This isn't the only, yeah, this isn't the only one of these boards that we're building with these switches. We did um, the RX, or the Scope RXs are wired uh, traditional 104 key. And then the Claymore 2, we are talking about not liking tin key pads and uh, all that stuff the uh, claymore 2 lets you have it uh, both ways um because the numpad is detachable you can slide it onto either side or take it off entirely and um it's cool yeah it's cool yeah um it's obviously this is something that we we showed a little bit before but the claymore 2 is really just designed for users like Jeff that, that, or maybe even left-handed users that, that want to utilize yeah. the, this mouse, this uh, numpad in a different way. So the numpad comes with four macro keys. It does have that, that audio scroll wheel on the top. You can take it off, put it on the left side of the keyboard, and you can even, um, you know, just, just treat that numpad as, you know, if you play World of Warcraft, maybe you want to have a bunch of your abilities macroed onto that it's it's really mm -hmm. nice for that use and again like jeff was saying um you could just remove it completely and that's mm -hmm. cool for like i play flight simulators and then i have to have two flight sticks on my desk at the same time well my keyboard's a little bit wide for that so by removing that that numpad suddenly you've got that much more real estate on your desk to fit it all mm -hmm. nicely in there that's a very unique situation there aren't a lot of people doing that but it's cool to have the flexibility yeah right and uh, this this one has a big dedicated volume roller on it too, which I really like. You got the volume roller. There's function keys. I love how um, we're just we're just opposite of each other. I'm like I hate the volume roller. You're like I love the volume roller. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, but the the big challenge with the Claymore two also is this uh, the R Scope RX is wired, and the Claymore two is wireless, oh. and so. You know, you can hook it up to your PC with a USB-C connector if you like, but um, it, it is by default wireless. And so um, these optical switches do have one interesting challenge if you're designing a wireless keyboard, which is that traditional switches, you know, with that metallic contact, you don't have to exert or expend large amounts of electricity at all to register key operation. Um, because the optical switches always have that light source uh, you do have to design the keyboard to be as minimal on power consumption as possible if you're going to cut the cord. And so we worked really hard to keep the battery life long while also enabling the use of the uh, RX optical mechanical switches on it. So, um, mm. yeah, it's it's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in there um, with, um, you know, I think it lasts... Uh, the. It should go up to 40 hours with the lighting on, okay. even with that, all that. So yeah, it's, you know, you won't have to recharge it often, but. Um, I want to Photoshop yeah. Jeff's head onto the red switch, my head on the blue switch, because <laughs> team red versus team blue. <laughs> they do look like little soldiers waddling down, you know, next to each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, chat has requested to hear the, the key test again. So here we go. By all means. Very quiet. Welcome to the Asus ASMR chat. Nice. Hit the keys harder. Oh my God. Okay. I mean, I've got mine right here. Let me turn off NVIDIA broadcast real quick and you can probably hear the entirety of it. Can you hear that? Yeah, well, we're a little bit, but we're fighting AI noise cancellation built into a lot of our other software. Like the, the gotcha. call does it, so. <laughs> Anyways. Whoa. 
<laughs> oh yeah um no it's 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 really smooth these aren't quite quiet i mean i could mm -hmm. I, I could grab a blue switch for a side-by-side -side comparison give me like two seconds we're gonna we're gonna do this sure as I slap, yeah. slap my hotkey and change the scene like a total dingus. All right, so that's, <laughs> the, that's the new reds. Here's, here's a Strix that's the, flare yeah, that's the with flare. blue. And um, can you guys hear that? I don't know how much is getting canceled. I don't think Jeff can hear much, but I think Stream can hear it. I hope stream can hear it. Yes, they can. Excellent. You guys like the ASMR? You want more? Okay. <laughs> Silky smooth. But yeah, these are the new red switches. Mm -hmm. They feel amazing. There's nothing left out. Uh, that's another thing that actually... Oh, these are a different style. I see. Man, I never noticed that. The the little latches on the back of this are like... When they're down, they're like a certain height, and then you get a higher height. So clever. I never even noticed that. Does this have that? No. I don't think so. No, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Clearly, it's unnecessary. But yeah, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of little, a lot of nice little details. A lot of macro switches. Um, a lot of control. We were talking about yeah. the Aurasync technologies um, and the the and built in. Armory crate. Yeah, Armory crate lets you do just ridiculous amounts of stuff. If you're a, if you're a dead or a hardcore macro user, uh, you can record macros, mm -hmm. uh, remap remap keys, set up every key to be a different color if you want. If that's your thing um save it to i think the board yeah it has five profiles so yeah customize it to your heart's content it's a cool effect oh man uh any questions yeah, it takes, you guys... sorry I, yeah i was gonna say it takes a lot for me to switch a keyboard like th as a writer primarily um if if a keyboard is bad and I have to type on it for any extended period of time, it quickly goes back in the parts pile. <laughs> and um, yeah, hey, you're honest. And this one, this the, this one has been on my desk ever since. I've been tolerating the numpad, <laughs> but I'll be happy for the Claymore too when I can take it off and go back to the tin key life. That's the dream, huh? Mm -hmm. The no numpad. Um, are you a wrist rest guy, Jake? Do you, do no. you use wrist rests or do, do you not. get rid of them? Okay. Yeah. I'm not a wrist rest person either. I float yeah. my wrists. So, oh, I'm just a full carpal tunnel boy. Like, let's just, let's just <laughs> yeah. give me that suffering. That's, that's the life I'm here for. Um, for Claymore, which ones would you recommend red, brown, blue, or black? Well, I think the Claymore is only going to come in red and blue, correct? Yeah, the original Claymore still may be out there. Um, oh, the Claymore 2, yeah, will not use. But yeah, I mean, it's really down to what you prefer. And if you don't know, like, you can order Switch testers from pretty much anywhere. They'll send you, like, a sample. But Yeah, it all a lot of these. it is, is just not preference, these. right? Um, I feel like, yeah. you know, I like, always... I actually can't use really heavy switches because it aggravates my carpal tunnel like you were saying i can't use super heavy switches like some some folks are like give me the heaviest spring you possibly can give me those greens and i'm like yeah i would like to feel my wrists and hands after you know five minutes <laughs> so the red the reds are really nice for me but um yeah, brown, browns are nice if you like that click, if you want to know when the key is actuated and you just, you know, you don't um, want to hear it like a big click when it happens. Uh, that's the tactile but not clicky. And then the blue is tactile and clicky. So they have the bump and the click. Right. Um, I'd say browns are my favorite from from past use just mm -hmm. because, like, I, I feel like 
they were able, I was able to retain the clickiness that I liked, but also not mm-hmm. have to worry about the noise as much. But you know, when I don't have to worry about the noise with AI noise cancellation nowadays as much, mm-hmm. I think yeah. it's uh it's nice to have it either way. Yeah. Um, will it be hot swappable compatible with boards that take cherry style switches? Um, will you be producing keycap colorways uh, for your proprietary stem? Anything is possible. Okay. I don't think they're hot swappable. Maybe um, in the future. Even, but yeah. Yeah. Even if they were, like, you'd have to buy. The, I mean, there's. It seems extremely unlikely that we would sell them separately. So yeah. Especially with it being such a new thing. Yeah. Just gonna take off a bunch of these keycaps so we can see the. But we ha- we have made like we have made in the past like there have been PBT uh, keycap sets. We have sh- sold boards with PBT. I know some people are really into. Ooh, that's a whole other thing in itself. This keycap material. Uh, we have made boards with PBT uh, keycaps, um, and you know the the universal answer is if there is demand, who knows? Anything is possible. Um, but I will say I'm really particular about that too, like a- a- B- ABS versus PBT uh, for my keycaps. Um, these feel really really nice for ABS. They don't have that slippery, greasy feel to them um, that some ABS keycaps get. So again, that's another hurdle, mm. <laughs> you know, for this to clear and it cleared it. So yeah, I'm really pleased with, with the default keycaps, but um, you can really, I, I don't think it would, you know, I don't, I'm not super into the keyboard customization scene, but I don't think it would be hard for someone to mold like a custom set. This isn't like a super elaborate switch or super elaborate cap design. Do you think these will take over this style? Do you think that Um, it has the potential to do that? I personally think they're better in every way. Okay. Than every other mechanical key switch I've tried to be perfectly honest with you. So it would, you know, I would love it. See, I'm not willing to Um, make that claim until I try the blue, but I am blown away by these. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So who knows? We'll see. I think, yeah, but if if you're into switch feel differences and, you know, all that fun stuff and you're just constantly in pursuit of the perfect switch, I would strongly urge you to uh, give these a try because they really are unlike anything else out there. I love the perky lighting. Really gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we have any other questions. When will the Claymore 2 be available? Uh, I do not know off the top of my head. Soon TM. Soon TM. So this one's available now. 130 bucks. Amazon and Newegg. But the Claymore 2. Mm-hmm. Soon TM. So many new things. So many new things. Yeah. Um, is the color worth it? What what do you mean by is that the question? Color worth it? <laughs> Like is the, the RGB LED like the glowing worth it? Absolutely. I think it's absolutely worth it. <laughs> we'll wait for verification, but do they have different yeah. sizes? No. It is one build, one one size keyboard. Yeah. It's uh you know Yeah, I mean we we have a full lineup of keyboards already. So like if there's not one in you know, like if you prefer a tin keyless, like or the new ROG Falchion is 65 percent um you know stay tuned yeah there's there's that's why Mm -hmm. each that's why we have a variety of models um Mm -hmm. but i'd say this is kind of like the full keyboard standard no extra bulk no extra you know things hanging off the edge which is what i really like about this it really just feels like a classic keyboard that's done right the the build quality is superb um and you know you know exactly what you're getting when you order it in terms of it's going to fit on your desk and then yeah that's why we have things like the claymore for the 10 keyless option or the swappable option Uh and the falchion as you mentioned another one that's um a newer product super compact yeah yeah yeah. super compact yeah so not even a not even like a separate uh arrow and um page up page down block on that one wow 
yeah yeah just so. all all integrated into one unit i'm super super excited to try that what is the I'm like the less go sorry good no no you go ahead yeah the less space taken up on the desk the better but i have we'll see how it goes the question was what is the weight of the keyboard i gotta go to the tech page um because that is not something i was prepared to answer but i'm props to you twitch chat you guys keeping us on our toes hold on i'll bring the tech page on screen all right anti-ghosting macro keys usb 1.07 kilograms is the magic number all right now translate that to poundage a little over two pounds <laughs> so that's about what you'd expect not not sure if you, if your desk is that fragile <laughs> <laughs> That the weight of the keyboard matters. Uh, um, 1.07 key, you're going to make sure you have to have a butcher block desktop. Otherwise, it's just going to mm -hmm. slam straight through it. But yeah, guys, um, these are... Oh, wow, I'm still in the darkness. I had that, that mood lighting on. I forgot all about my lights. Oh, God, it brought me to the shadow realm for a minute. But yeah, these are these are gorgeous. There's not much else to say. A lot of great things with these yeah. switches. I'm I'm pumped that you know our team has gone in and made our own in-house switches because mm -hmm. right that's really interesting. That feels like you know they're actually going in and pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to figure out mm -hmm. every little yeah. gain they can get um, for milliseconds yeah. of faster response time. But we are a, a company that's that's trying to support esports athletes at the highest level. And that mm -hmm. comes down to display refresh rate. That comes down to the latency on your mouse click. That comes down to the latency on your keystroke. Um, mm -hmm. NVIDIA is doing a lot of great stuff for that technology as well to really just speed up and lower the latency as much as possible yeah. between the user and the game. And mm -hmm. these little things add up. Yeah, they really do. <clears throat> All right, Jeff, any, any final thoughts? No, I'm thrilled that... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled we've um, we, we've taken such a familiar thing as the just basic key switch and said, how can this be better? And we just, we knocked it out of the park, I think. Go try it. My question is, how long until I can have the blues? Soon, TM. Oh, I want it now. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we we uh, have a, a lot of shows coming up in the near future. We Last week, we took a look at the X13 Flow, which is if you don't, or the Flow X13, I always mix up the name. If you guys don't know what that is, I encourage you to Google it. Check out our past episode. It's up on YouTube. It's an incredibly unique device, brand new, transformable laptop that can also basically just be docked and turned into a desktop. Um, and yeah, we've got new shows coming up covering basically all of our new laptop refreshes and much, much more in the new fu near future. Next week, or our next show is going to be talking about virtual reality on our sister show to this to where we just kind of dive in and talk about various, various topics. Well, VR is going to be a topic for next week. I think uh, our Lord Gaben, our Lord and Savior, um, actually was just, he just did a whole interview where he, he dove in. He talked about kind of the future of... Yeah. VR and neural link technology. So that got me real, real hyped to, to jump into that. You have realm. to go check that out. Oh, you, you haven't watched Let's it? Let's go check that out. No, I've not. You are slacking. <laughs> yeah. Stop working. <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to do it for us here at Pulse. We'll see you next time. Take care.